What's up? I'm on this little uh, afternoon live here. I just got a lot of thoughts uh, that I'd like to uh, share. Uh, like, come on, just listen. That's cool, too. Uh, but I'm just, uh, just on here just sharing thoughts. So, but anyway, do this really quickly. What's up? Come on in. I'm just uh, in the middle of getting some things together here. Welcome, 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 welcome. Let's see if this is right. It's the wrong damn thing. Welcome, welcome. Let's see. Well, anyway. There's <sighs> a lot going on. Kevin Jackson, what's up, man? A lot going on. And I, you know, I don't like for too much time to go by before I uh, share my thoughts. And uh, y'all are welcome to hit me up with this in a minute. We got about three topics that I like to share. Hmm. Hmm. Trying to get that potassium in. So, uh, you know, we're getting down, uh, <laughs> you know, Ernest, I thought I'd try to look cool. I'm just, uh, I want to debut my fall winter look early, I guess. That's why I have the scarf on, trying to look cool. <laughs> yeah. I, um, hey, Angie, what's up? Let me tell y'all something. Hey, Angie, stranger, what it do? Uh, let me get right to it. And as people come in, we'll get to it. But first of all, check me out. I got my, I got my cash app up. I got my link to my book on this on this live. If you have not bought it, thank you, Kevin. He's, he's, he's checked it out. But if you have not purchased your copy of it, go ahead. Because everything is on this link. No, not the Roland Martin thing. Roland Martin wears ascots. No, no, I don't do. I don't do that. This is a full scarf, just chilling. Um, if you have not gotten it, you know uh, all the links are here. I, the book, the book was dope. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, man. Uh, and I'm trying. I'm still getting it out. I'll be getting getting it out to whoever I think does not have it, and a lot of people don't have it yet. So, but it's all about advertising and. I'm going to amp that up as the season progresses, amp up the advertisement of it, because I think I've advertised it to death on Facebook, and so I'm going to be hitting the public in a little while, uh, uh, later on, probably next month, or as, as November comes, December, or something like that, just going around and say, hey, have you, have you read this book, man, check it out, check it out, it's only $10, uh, yeah, you know, hit me up on the Cash App, when you hit me on the Cash App, send me an email address so I can email it to you, because in PDF file. Uh, and also my cash app is on here, you know, dollar sign black man mojo. I think it also works with dollar sign Rico Rivers, R-I-V-E-R-S. I think it works both, but I pushed the black man mojo because you know, it's my little nonprofit. I'm trying to put it out there in the atmosphere. And that's what I forgot. I forgot to put my, my GoFundMe for my nonprofit effort on this link. I'll probably do it when I finish this live. But anyway, a lot going on, trying to do my part and be a part of, uh, uh, damn, I just noticed something. Yeah, I, um, uh, you know, do my part in to being a part of the solution as relates to what's going on with us as a people, and particularly black men, black boys. And uh, as a long-time social worker, that's what I always like to do is try to turn my efforts 
you know, trying to improving the, the mental health and emotional stability and just the outlook of black boys and black men. So, and speaking of black men, let me get right to it. Those of you, I, I won't be saying, I won't be acknowledging any comments because that is something I'm just going to speak right into the camera and share my thoughts. But feel free to come on and listen. And maybe afterwards, after I've gotten everything off my mind, I'll invite anybody who'd like to uh, share some thoughts on what I'm saying. You can do so after I'm done. So give me, probably give me about 20 minutes. So 20 minutes of me ranting, I guess, if it takes that long. But uh, I did my early voting, and um, and it was really easy. And I don't have a problem with people who vote or don't vote, because it's your right to do so. And uh, it's on my page that, that I did vote. And uh, because I know November 3rd, next Tuesday, is going to be a madhouse. So I picked a, a day where the lines weren't long and the line was not long. Matter of fact, I walked right on in. And then what was so awesome about it, where I voted, uh, particularly in the county that I live in, you know, it had, it didn't have where you had to vote straight Democratic ticket or straight Republican ticket. It gave you actually a choice to whomever you wanted to vote for, which allowed me to vote uh, for Green Party and Libertarian candidates, Green Party candidates, because uh, I didn't vote any, you know, the other Democrat or Republican. I didn't vote any uh, Democrats at all. And, um, and, and the reason that I'm never probably ever voting Democrat again, because when you become more mature, Politically, when you start looking at the facts and looking at the policies of, of this particular party, because somehow we've been told because we're black, we're supposed to vote Democrat. And if, even though I would ever take the chance to pick up a history book, you'll see that out the first party of, of the newly freed slaves and a lot of the um, rights and um, uh, a lot of laws that were passed in our favors came under Republicans. And so we, I guess we refer to it as the, the party of Lincoln, who was a Republican. And uh, I'm not saying that I'm a Republican. I, I, I view myself as an independent. With, and as being an independent, you get to vote whomever you want to, vote for whomever you want to, and it's based on policy, not personality. Uh, but for, for black folks, it's like we've been geared towards voting for who we think like, likes us. And that's very immature. It's very childlike. Uh, no other group behaves this way. And then for the past 40 years, voting for Democrats, all we've ever done is just give the Democratic Party the vote. And if you go look in any black neighborhood that is trash, that is poor, that is run down, it is under a Democratic candidate. It is. And I'm not speaking against, I'm just speaking facts. You go home, wherever you live, wherever city that you're watching this live on, go look in your, your neighborhood. If you live in a beautiful suburb, your representative is a Republican. But if you live in the hood, anywhere around that, your representative is a Democrat. What is it about the Democratic Party that that thinks that black people only deserve uh, poverty or run-down environments or pipelines being drawn through the community. Why, why, does, why does this this party of people, I guess the party of Kennedy, as they want to say, believe that black people are only deserving of impoverished situation? Then also... Uh, when I break it down as a male, as a heterosexual masculine black man, the Democratic Party has really never served any purpose for us as black men. This is not me going on personalities, going on history and policy. You know, uh, the last time I voted Democrat was with Obama. Uh, 2008 and 2012, and the reason I did it, not because I wanted to, because I believed in change or believed in hope, 
and believe that he was a black dude because I didn't flunk ninth grade at home economics. I know if you have a cup of sugar and you put a, a, a drop of salt in it, it doesn't make that cup of sugar salt. It makes it mixed. It makes it a mixture. If you got a white mom and a black daddy, that doesn't make you black. It makes you biracial. And that is a separate group. And so when you start going back to the books of junior high school and high school and opening up your books in college or going to your public free library, you start learning things and you start paying attention. And so as I allow my Aquarius mind to wander and discover, I start seeing things what they are. And I voted for Obama not because I wanted to. And I cheated myself. I voted for Obama because, you know, it's like, I didn't want to hear black people's mouths. Did you vote for Obama? Because they were so geeked and so hyped and, and it was so well funded and orchestrated the Obama hysteria. I didn't vote for him because I thought he was a better candidate or thought he was some savior for blacks. I'm more intelligent than that. I graduated from an HBCU. They teach us to be way more intelligent than that. Or at least I became more intelligent than that. I don't know about other HBCU or black college graduates. But I know during my college experience, I learned a lot of self-awareness. I learned about black consciousness and, and our history as a race of people when I, when I was there. Now, other people probably learned other things. <laughs> Democratic robot. <sighs> Understood that there were three branches of government and how, how the president works, how the governors and uh, the senators and congressmen, then there's state reps, state senators, state representatives. I learned about all of that stuff. Then city council persons and mayors. And I learned all of that in civics class at Cypress Junior High School uh, in North Memphis. Shout out to North Memphis. I, I don't know it all, but I learned some things. And so I did. I buckled to pressure and I, and I voted. Uh, for Obama, and I knew then I was gonna never. And after that, I knew after watching eight years of nothingness, eight years of black folks just praising what they think is their biracial Jesus and getting nothing in return. Now the elite blacks, maybe the Greek affiliated blacks, probably got some, got something, or got this sense of pride. It's the weirdest thing. They had they wanted to force black boys and black men to have this sense of pride because he was in the White House. They need fathers. I ain't need him to have any self pride as a black man. I understand. I've already read about great men before this manufactured biracial guy. I read about Marcus Garvey. I read about Malcolm X. I read about Noble Drew Ali, Denmark Vincent, David Walker. I learned about a lot. Elijah Muhammad. I learned about a lot of black men. I didn't need him. Nobody to tell me you should be proud. He a black man like oh, it was ridiculous. And I don't like going against my own conscience just to uh, appease the masses. That's never I've never been that way when I was a young man in school, in high school. I was not like that. I was always considered outside the box because I always questioned the, uh, the structured or the scripted norm. But I gave in to the scripted norm in voting for Obama. And he hadn't really promised anything except for hope. And that's all. And Negroes are still hoping. So now you got this Biden-Harris thing going on. And um, and they clearly have a record of not having a great relationship with black men. One thing about me, I don't do bullies and uh, I, don't, I don't allow anybody to mistreat me. I may not act a fool about it, but I, I'll show you that I don't fool with you with my silence. I just move on. And, but no, this Biden-Harris Harris thing is so deep because what they're telling black people, well, if you don't vote by Biden and Harris, Trump is going to end the world. You know, and I'm, I'm a grown-up. You can't tell me anything like that. I know how to read. I know how to uh, watch videos and articles. He said this. He said that. I don't give a damn about what he said. I go by what people did. See, there's people who said a lot of weird stuff to me or messed up stuff to me growing up. But what I'm most um, impacted by is what you've done to me. Did that sound too grown up? I don't give a damn about what you say. I go by what you've done to me. 
See, Biden has a history of saying a lot of racist and stupid things about black folks. And all the videos have been coming out. But Biden also has a history of doing something, meaning he put into law what he feels about me as a black man and as black people. He put it into law. See, that's the stuff I pay attention to. Uh, Kamala Harris, she played the game. Yeah, she screwed, had sex with black men to get her way up to the top. But she showed you by her own policies as DA and as Attorney General what she thought about you. See, I vote based on policy, not personality. I don't care what you said. I pay attention to what you did. And when I went into that voting booth, that's what I did. I voted based on policy, not on personality. I didn't get involved in this hysteria. I didn't get involved in this hysteria. Oh, my God. We have to, because there's no other choice. We had a lot of choices. We got Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, Green Party. We want to talk about America and having all these rights. Well, you have the right to choose whatever. But it's something about us that everybody thinks they can tell us what to do, black people. And then you hire these firms, I call the black, the black bully firms, black liberal firms, who have given, given instructions <clears throat> By the white liberal counterparts. They say, you got to tell these blacks, Roland Martin. You got to tell these other blacks, Don Lemon. You got to tell these other blacks, Whoopi Goldberg, and all these other black liberal, black Democrats. Tell them, this, they voting, this voting, they're voting for their lives. Every election cycle, they say the same thing to black people. And we fall for it because we won't read what I've read. We won't read what Dr. Claude Anderson is talking about. We won't read what Dr. Francis Gresswelsen told us about. We won't read what Dr. Joy Leary is talking about. We won't read what Dr. Jawanza Kunjufu is telling us about. We won't read what Michael Porter is telling us. We won't read what Dr. John Henry Clark taught us. We won't read what Dr. Ben Yakahanan pointed out to us. We won't read. So we let other people tell us. We won't read what Dr. Amos Wilson said to us. And a lot of these people I name, you can go on YouTube. See, I don't, I'm not presenting myself as all-knowing. I'm not. When God was giving out common sense, and there was a long line, I stayed in line until I got my share. But I did notice a lot of other people stepped out of line because they got tired of waiting. Or they stepped out of line to know to get some lunch. I had my lunch on me. I ate my sandwich in line. So, that's where my common sense comes from. I kept, I stayed in line and got mine. The way we behave, I mean, black folks with degrees and affiliations, we behave as children when it comes to the political process. We're around here debating. He a racist. He a racist. As if Donald Trump is the only white president we've ever had. We've had 44 of them. And he's the only racist. I'm not here to defend Trump. I'm just, I'm using common sense. And so, they try to make him the boogeyman. I, I guess. But then again, I look in these black neighborhoods. All your representatives are Democrat. That if they're hood, if they're run down, they're trash, your representative is a Democrat. Black or white. In these suburbs y'all moved to once you got your college degrees from these beautiful HBCUs, your, your representatives are Republicans. So I understand how you put two and two together. If I move to a beautiful suburb and I find out my representatives are all on the city council there and all that in the city so beautiful and gorgeous and my neighborhood the houses are $200,000 plus and I live there and my children go to these top-notch schools and I find out my representatives are Republicans. How do, you not, how do you not juxtapose the two? How do you not marry the two? Say so you want to say about the Republican Party, they're about getting their money. And yes, we know racism, white supremacy, system, systemic racism, it is what it is. But Democratic Party, 
and liberal white liberals are the worst person on the planet. All you got to do is go listen to what Malcolm said about the white liberal and white moderate. See, the conservatives, one thing about them, they've never changed their stripes. They've always been one, white. But the liberal party tries to add in a little yellow, a little green, a little blue, black, white, to throw you off. See, there's a difference in treatment. Conservatives say, look, we ain't going to bother y'all. Don't bother us. Get this money. That's what this is about. Conservatives like families. They enjoy families. Mother, father, children. And they can be all Christian and all that. You know, it gets deep into that. I'm not into that. They believe in the man being the lead. Having structure, discipline, decorum. Now, we can go and nitpick all day long about what some of them be doing in these, air, in these airports. Tapping their finger. Hey, I got it. <laughs> uh, I get it. I'm not saying these people aren't perfect. They're perfect. What I'm saying is, that's not my big issue here. Everyone has proclivities. But see, then you have these Democratic folks. They, they trying, these Democrats are trying to bring you trans bathrooms. They're pushing the LGBTQ all over TV, all in your life, all in your child's life. Having trans come and read. You know, men dressed up as Caitlyn Jenner reading to your second grade child, your, your kindergarten child. They're pushing Sodom and Gomorrah behavior. All under, we're all inclusive. A lot of y'all don't, a lot of us, a lot of y'all, a lot of us don't include a lot of foolishness under the Democratic Party. So I understand why we're still so loyal. We don't get any benefits except all we get are like social programs and handouts. When All we got to do is pool our money and write our own grants and get our own damn programs. Because it's all of our tax dollars. But we don't seem to know that or understand that piece. And as, you know, all they do is push effeminate men and, and Hispanics and immigrant policies um, are they seem to push you know, women's issues as if men aren't even real people Hispanics, gays immigrants and women now where in there do you think a heterosexual masculine man fits I know a lot of black dudes vote Democrat because their mama, their wife, their daughter, their girlfriend, their aunt, you know, because women are, women have always pulled us to the polls and told us that's what we should do. But we don't get any benefit. The women get all the benefit. And women who vote Democrat are obviously not into family because they don't push family. They push foolishness. They push two women here in the household. They push gay. They don't push men and women and child. They don't push the man being the lead. What they do is try to empower the women over the men. That's no. Let me know if I'm, I'm lying, y'all. Come on. Let me know if I'm lying. But they they are exactly like Malcolm X said. They are the. You have the wolf and you have the fox. They're the fox. Slinking their way into your neighborhood, slinking their way into all your business, and then destroy it from the inside out. Destroy you morally. Destroy it. That's what they do. And me, the way I'm built, you know, as knowing that the majority of black folks were originally conservative people, as it relates to expectations of behavior, expectations of morality, expectations. The Democratic Party doesn't have any of that. They they literally want the borders wide open, not just country borders that. For the countries, but also moral borders. Anything goes. That's why there's so much confusion in people's lives. Because the Democratic Party and white and black liberals, they just want you to. It's. I was talking to someone about the perfect example of the Democratic Party and liberal whites and liberal blacks. Moses goes up to Mount Sinai to speak to God on the form of the burning bush. He goes up there and his hair is all gray, his beard is all long and white, and he comes back. I'm going by the movie, of course. He comes back with the two tablets to say, I brought the law of the Lord back, and so we can have a society that will dictate a particular level of morality and decorum. 
But when he returned after all that having that deep conversation and, and that teaching and learning from God himself or herself, I guess. He comes back to find that the people were all liberal and democratic. That was hustling, that was pimping, that was hoeing, that was gayness, that was savagery. And it pissed him off. So you know in the movie he throws the tablets and just destroys it and boom, boom, like the punishment. Well, that's the Democratic Party. They allow all types of debauchery as long as you know. It's almost like that. Let them eat cake because they'll destroy themselves eventually. Let's give them what they want. And the thing is, black folks, we don't know what we want. We say a lot, but we don't know what we want because we haven't gone to the back to the foundation of who we were. If I can just get us to go back to understand. That when our people were first freed from slavery, they had nothing. They didn't have a language. But somehow, 10 years or so after it, afterwards, they, they built their own little communities. They were the head carpenters, head builders. They built businesses. And years went on. They opened up colleges and universities. Shout out to Grammar State University, Booker T. Washington, Charles B. Adams. Shout out to Mary McLeod Bethune for Bethune, Bethune Cookman. They were able to do that, but we we don't look we don't lean on that. And so here we are. We're still right here clowning about clowning about see whose white man is less racist than the other white man. And as Aquarius man, I couldn't care less. Because I'm looking at policy. And there we are. If you're black, you're supposed to vote Democrat. I don't know where they got that from. And if you say you're independent, you're just an independent Republican. What's wrong with being a Republican? I told y'all, those of you who live in these beautiful suburbs, wherever you live across the country, your representative is a Republican. So I don't know how, you, how you're unable to merge the two. Those beautiful malls, the beautiful shopping strips, all that real nice. Republican. But if you live in your hood, dirty, underfunded schools, underfunded businesses, corner stores, Arabs, Asians everywhere, them little corner stores, all Democratic. So, I always vote policy. Of a personality. You can't get me with how well someone speaks and all of that. I look at their policy. You can't get me about, well, they said this. He said that. She said this. I don't care what they said. What was the policy? What was the law they had passed? Even, you know, even on Obama, he passed a blue alert law that protected the police from criminal justice, uh, from, from uh, being charged or anything after they've murdered an unarmed black man. Or people, period. So people seem to not know that. I want to accept that. Fine. So when I went into the booth, I continued on my path of how I vote my conscience and I vote for policy. No apologies here. But I need black Democrats because to stop this, I need black folks who are non-voters who are just so anti-Republican, anti Anything other than Democrat, I need you to have a bunch of goddamn seats. Stop attacking black men and black women who don't vote Democrat. That'll make them less black than you. A lot, a lot of times it makes them more aware than you. Because they know there's something else out there at least. There's something else that they can possibly benefit from. Stop doing that. It's terrible. But we won't stop because we have these white liberals and these black gatekeepers who are getting paid off of the plantation of the Democratic Party. Simone Sanders and all those folks, Don Lemon. You know, Y'all know who these people are. They get paid to tell you, you black, when it's convenient for them. But when, they, when the campaign is not going on, they're living in their beautiful suburbs. Living their great lives, sending their black children to Harvard and Yale, not to HBCUs. Yeah, I said it. Y'all can fill in the blanks. Know who's doing that. Al Sharpton, Roland Martin, and all of those folks. They'll come out. 
when it's election season to tell you how black you are and how important your vote is. It's interesting, no one ever tells um, Asians how important their vote, is, their vote is, or Jews how important their vote is. No one ever tells those other groups. Italians, I don't know how important their vote is, but they tell black people, your vote is important. People died for you to vote. Uh, there are people, our people were hung and lynched. Blah, blah. No one ever tell, no one tell, says that to any other group. Unless you know they don't respect us as a group. Because we don't have enough sense to tell them, I don't need you to tell me that. I vote the fuck I want to. We we see it all the time. Whenever someone decides not to participate in a democratic process or the Democratic Party bullying, they're called coon, sambo, buck, sellouts, and their mental health is questioned. Ice Cube been supporting anybody, but he's man, given being dragged through. But one thing about him, luckily for him, he already has his money, and Ice Cube is a strong minded dude. It's just anybody. You know, it doesn't make any sense how we're still behaving uh, like such children. Again, I don't care who you vote for, but I can say this, but I don't understand why black Democrats and black liberals don't understand that about other black people. That doesn't make them less black than you because they don't, they don't, they don't have the same political leanings. That's the weirdest shit on the planet. How does that work? How does that work? I know a myriad of people, dude. Some folks, non-voters, Democrat, Republicans, and, you know, black Trump, Trump supporters. What have they done to anybody in the hood? They attack. They accept for being attacked for being a Trump supporter, and they don't even ask you for your opinion. You just think you're supposed to give it to them. It's the weirdest shit. See, people are wondering why so many black men are heading towards. Trump, 6% in 2016 is up to probably about 17%, might even get up to in the 20s. Black men are getting to their original, <clears throat> they're getting to their original thinking process of conservatism. Black men, just like any other man, likes to run his own household. Black men, like any other man, likes to enjoy money, make his own money, create, build. Black men, like any other man. Don't like to be told what to do and told, excuse me, how he's supposed to vote. But due to the fact that black men have always been the target in this society since little boys. And I mentioned Dr. Jawanza Kanjufu who wrote Counting the Conspiracy to Destroy Black Boys. He talks about how black boys are targeted as soon as they reach the first grade in education. Michael Porter writes the book. Kill them before they grow. He too talks about how the mental health of black boys and self-esteem of black boys are targeted early. And then you have Dr. Amos Wilson who speaks about the, the, the trauma of uh, white supremacy, slavery and white supremacy on the black male and the black male image. See, there, there are scholars out there talk who's spoken about this, but we won't read. And it's unfortunate that when you took out the black male systematically, you created this female-headed matriarchy that has produced these confused men today. They don't know who they are. They don't have that masculine confidence. A lot of black men don't. They think they think that all the women they have sex with, that is masculinity. No, it's called poor sexual control food. Poor discipline, sexual discipline. That's what that is. You don't know any better. You're the ones that got all the baby mamas around here. Those of us with appropriate sexual discipline, we don't have a bunch of babies with different women all over the place. It's nothing to brag about. But it comes from a matriarchy, matriarchal upbringing, mainly. Because women can't teach men how to, boys how to be men. And so you have this going on. It's really bad right now. It's ridiculous. These young guys don't think anything about being one dude with three baby mamas in three different cities or three different sections of one city and then bring your silly behind out in the public and say, I'm a good dad, I take care of all my kids. No, you don't, Dwayne. I mean, what's his name? Howard, that's his name? Uh, what's that little, that basketball player had all those kids and his 12-year-old son is telling him I hate you. 
Uh, yeah, the Howard. Yeah, last name is Howard. Y'all know who he is. This one with the Lakers. He's a pitiful dude. Even though, you know, men can't get any Ponani without permission. But Dwight Howard, there it is, Dwight Howard. He's terrible. And he got a 12 year old by that little silly chick from the real house, real basketball wives, that little chick. You know, that all the women that had babies by Dwight Howard are just as goofy as all the chicks that had babies with future. Silly ass women. But then you're going to train your children to say, tell, you, tell your dad. I mean, yeah, train your ch children to tell your dad, I hate you. She did that. But why would any man with good sense spread his seed to so many women? That's what you have a wife for. I understand you have one wife, you get divorced, you have a second wife, and then y'all have children. I get that. But you got these never married men with different baby mamas all over the damn place. And you wonder why there's so much confusion? Why these children grow up hurt, you stupid ass? You ought to be ashamed, but you don't know to be ashamed. You think that's manly. It's not. It's minimal. It's mentally minimal. But unless we start talking about their behavior, it's going to continue. So, the one thing about being on the conservative side, black men are waking up. I don't have to vote Democrat because I'm black. And the Democratic Party has never had a place for me anyway. And so, uh, you know, stop attacking black folks who don't vote like you. Yeah, I say my stuff about Biden and Harris because, I, you know, there's a lot of information to be said about them. I mean, policy-wise. Yeah, I, yeah, I do. But, uh, but it's nothing, it's nowhere near how black folks, even if a hint of they say they're, they're Republican or they dare say they voted for Trump out loud. It's like, yeah, they get treated worse than a dope dealer in the black neighborhood or a child pedophile or or uh, a gang member in the black neighborhood. They, I mean, and, and the people who vote for, black people who vote for Trump or black people who are Republicans, they don't cause any harm in the black neighborhood. They don't. They just doing them. They move on, do other things. Don't cause any harm. I'm sure you have some exceptions. You know, that little bastard out of Kentucky. Have to remember Phi Beta Sigma was a damn Cameron, Daniel Cameron, who didn't press charges in the in the Breonna Taylor case. Have the exception, but for the most part, black conservatives and black Republicans, they don't bother black folks. <laughs> they don't. But Many in our community seem to want to bother them just because of their political leanings. That needs to stop as of this. Because this campaign, this election is just off the charts. It's ridiculous how people, how silly people are. Uh, but anyway, I uh, just wanted to share that. Vote for who you want to. If you find out that somebody black didn't vote for Biden and Harris, don't attack them. Because they got good reason. I had good reason for not voting for voting for Biden and Harris. They have a they have a track record. Laws that they put in place or they've enacted or followed. They said I can't stand black men. Alone with being referred to as super predators. So I'm not retarded. I'm not stupid. So uh you know, this misconception that Democratic Party has black people's interests only is stupid. Because as any group, your job is to vote for vote for the party or the person who has your individual interests or your group's interests at heart. We don't do that. We do it because, you know, yeah, I vote. I'm Democrat. Yeah, it's silly. It's silly. We just need to mature. I know it's more people than me. I'm just using my, my platform to talk talk like that, talk like this, and discuss this. Because it doesn't make any sense. I mean, people are literally falling out and calling people names and not speaking to them and deleting them from their Facebook pages. And, you know, uh, and because of who they say they don't support. And they don't tell who they support. They said... 
If they dare say I don't vote, I don't support Biden Harris, all of a sudden they become public enemy number one. And that's ridiculous. And also, don't you dare say the truth, the genetic truth that Kamala Harris is not black. Oh my God, she black. She plays the black sorority. That's so stupid because we know we got a lot of white folks that's Kappas and Alphas and Qs and AKAs, but y'all ain't never called them black. Never heard it. So how come this mulatto, this Indian from India, but who prefers to call, us, call herself Southeast Asian or Caucasian on her birth certificate, she gets to be black, and we still let people play those silly games with us? Mature, black people, please. Mature. That's all. Just, just vote strategically. And whoever wins, you know, and I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that the Biden-Harris people win because I think these people have literally bedded their homes and their cars and their children at the races on Biden. And if he doesn't win, I think there's going to have to be a lot of a dispatching of ambulances across the country to a lot of black households. And the suicide hotline is going to be clogged <laughs> if Biden and Harris don't win. So you Biden and Harris supporters, I hope they win for your sake. I want you to still be alive. Because I swear, y'all just act like this is it for America, the world, and black people. Y'all know, we, if we can survive 500 years of cattle slavery, I'm sorry, 350 years of cattle slavery, uh, 100 years, 1865 to 1965 of Jim Crow, and then from 1970 to now, the feminism, LGBT, homophobia accusations, and, and a continuous Jewish onslaught, the tax, I think, uh, and this systematic white supremacy, I think we're we going to still be here. We just need to learn how to um, how to behave appropriately uh, under the system of racism and white supremacy. Dr. Claude Anderson teaching us this, but we won't. I know y'all think y'all got these real old African centered pastors. Some of y'all here in Dallas mess with Freddie Haynes, and some of you got some of these little so called real pro black preachers. If they was pro black, they wouldn't be preachers. Y'all didn't hear me, did you? If they was actually pro-black, they wouldn't be preachers. Because history has taught me that the Negro preacher was created on the plantation as the spokesperson or the mouthpiece for the white massa. And he was never allowed to preach about Moses because Moses talks about escaping and delivering of people physically from bondage. They were never allowed to talk, teach that. They were only taught to what they teach all today. Superficial things. You you do well right now, and you get to go and die and be with the Lord and have uh, milk and honey, and streets paved with gold. But be poor and carry that, carry that heavy burden. Why are you here on earth? I know somebody say, my pastor don't teach that. My pastor, I'm gonna tell you what your pastor don't preach. How how out of bed, how of uh, how teenage single motherhood and motherhood has ruined the black community. He don't teach that. But he'll teach you how men ain't shit all day long. How men are falling off as men. They need to step up. But he won't talk about all these single mothers, how they volunteer to be single mamas. You know why? Because women make up, black women make up 87% of the black church. So he's not going to cut his purse strings trying to preach the truth. Because one thing about the truth, it, cre it creates action. Now, you can preach fables and allegories and all that kind of stuff. Well, people, they feel good about it. They ain't going to move. They might move side to side, but they won't move forward. Hence the black church. Y'all can tell I haven't been to church since I was 11. I left the black church when I was 12 years old. I never looked back. <laughs> so. Oh, here it is, Ernie. Mm. The vegetable B8, B8.
And so, I have two other topics. I just want to share that with you. Cause I'm, I'm, it's like, I need y'all to stop it. It's foolishness. But, but, but do you. Always do you. This is just me sharing my thoughts. Because uh, my YouTube channel is Rico the Opinionist. And those of you who know me in, in our youth, when I used to have that newsletter. And even in Memphis, I always shared my opinion. It's all just thoughts, but, you know. I've always asked anybody, instead of calling me names like, you son of a bitch, you're controversial, I can't stand you, and all that stuff, the people, you know, and, and think these weird thoughts. Just, uh, but one thing I've never been called, or two things I've never been called is a liar and a coward. Because what I say here, I'll say in, per in person too. It's nothing to me, it's just thoughts. Uh, but these days, nah, I don't talk about stuff I talk about on Facebook. Because usually if I'm seen, I'm somewhere probably having a crown coke apple crown or crown apple and coke or somewhere in a, in a festive environment i don't want to talk politics when i'm out enjoying myself if i even if i'm walking in the mall it'll be a cash app fee of 150 bucks per question so just spread the word if you see him don't ask him anything about what he said on facebook or his youtube channel it's not for free I learned when I was a young student at Grambling State University. Shout out to Grambling State University where everybody, somebody, come on, somebody. That black folks aren't interested in hearing any truth, hearing any, having a conversation to hear any truth to change behavior or to work a strategy that's different from what they were doing in the first place. They just like to hold you up to tell you, well, I don't like what you said. You shouldn't have said this. Who told you? That's all they like. So... And I guess, in other words, you're not going to cuss me out for free. Or share your thoughts to me for free. If we, if we saw each other in person. So you know the cash out, you see me around here. I want to ask you about what you said about uh, the black church and, and the voting. Hit me with that cash out for 100 bucks, 150 Dollar sign, black man mojo. And there's one question, no follow up. And my question is usually yes and no. I don't have to give you a long ass explanation that turns into... Elongated conversation, you know, unless unless you're unless not if you're a young person, high school or college age, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, you know, something like that. I may bring it down or may just have a conversation because I'm interested in teaching young people. But oh, it's I ain't trying to learn nothing. You just don't want people to say things. That's all. But anywho, uh, I have an, another topic here. Um, I just ran across something I found quite disturbing. Do y'all remember the George Floyd murder? And the young lady who was filming it. Hey, stop it. What are you doing? That's terrible. Stop. Well, she's a 17-year-old teenager. And I just read an article where she was, uh, she's being given an award by this, uh, liberal PEN, it's called PEN, P-E-N is the acronym. Uh, if you go look it up, you'll see what what the what the institution is that's uh, that's awarding her this award of courage, award of courage, and it's out of New York. She lives in Minneapolis. I said, so she's getting an award of courage for standing there watching them for filming a man's death. But people have been filming, filming people getting shot and murdered by the cops way before her. So why are they doing it? Again, liberal stuff. Why are they giving her a reward, an award for talking about courage? That took no courage. And I'm going to go into a deeper topic here. Let's see. See, I, I can see if she'd been given a, an, an award of courage. Has she been filmed or videotaped hitting that cop in the head with a brick? Throwing a bottle or something to distract them? or, or And I wouldn't adv advocate her throwing her body on the cop or anything, but there was enough people out there, they all could have gone into that very corner store. It was in front of the corner store where he allegedly... Uh, well, he allegedly tried to pass a counterfeit 20. They could have all gone in that store with real money and bought a bottle of yoo -Hoo or Snapple because it's still made of glass. Each one of them got a bottle or a bottle of beer and all of them
took turns throwing those beer bottles, Snapple bottles at the cops to bust that up. Now that would have been worthy of an award for courage. So I don't know what their angle is, but I don't trust it. Why would y'all reward this woman, this little black girl, and call it courage? That took no damn courage. But again, black men are the backdrop for everybody's comeuppance. Everybody gets to feed and eat off of black men and you no know, black bodies. Black men, black male bodies. Uh Black Lives Matter got started off of the off of the death of a black male body or off the off a black male body, Trayvon Martin. No Mike Brown, same thing. They got even bigger off of him being murdered. Y'all see the pattern here? It's weird. But I just want to know my query is mine. Just checks this stuff out. And that's why I'm always talking to black men about becoming more empowered, understanding. First, you got to recognize that you're human beings and it's time for us to stop being used. You know, they don't want to use us to be intellectuals, to create, to be scientists. They just want to use us for, uh, you know, physical purposes or whatever resources we can contribute in relationships. You know, they want to use us for our brawn and this and not for our brains. I need black men to uh, mentally level up, if you will, and, and have more self-esteem and more self-awareness and self-pride and, and more self-value in who we are as human beings. Because everyone gets to uh, eat off the black male, dead or alive. And I, and, and I feel really there's a, an uneasiness about that about her getting that and I, I just get tired of watching how black men are just exploited uh, uh, for just their humanity but we don't treat black boys and black men humanely in society but once they're dead everyone wants to you know kind of pick at the carcass if you will like this whole debate about when you hear black women say we always standing up for black men. We on the front lines fighting for black men. And then they mess around and say it to somebody like me with good sense. You mean after that dead helper? When you know the cameras are out there for you to get, <laughs> for you to be seen? You mean when it's time for you to get a $1.2 million or a $12 million payment after he's been murdered only by the cop? Then, <laughs> you know, there's no protest when Gang members and drug dealers and black dudes kill each other in the neighborhood. There's no protest. But we'll let, let a cop do it. It's time to bring out and all the black women out there get to yell in the police face. And yeah, 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 you racist, you're racist. No racist police, no justice, no peace. And then they do what black females do, align themselves to these other non-black groups. And they get all the credit. You don't stand on the front line with us, sisters. And y'all need to quit lying. You don't. You do not stand up for black men. You do not stand up for black boys. Because if you did, you would not be voting Democrat. And I'm, a, I'm telling you right now, you are a goddamn liar. And you're a fake and an attention whore. You don't care about black men and black boys. Because if you did, you wouldn't have so many children out of wedlock if you cared about children. If you cared about black boys, you make sure your, your, your ch every child you had will have at least one father. No more than two because people get divorced. I get that. So every time I hear that, I just shake my head. But no other man's going to say this out loud and still expect, you know, <laughs> not to feel the backlash. That's why I've always been, I've always been, I guess it's a different kind of dude. I tell the truth whenever. I've told the truth about white folks for decades. But she like I get the most pushback when I tell the truth about us. Hell, that's what I'm affected by mostly when uh, us. But I'm not gonna let that white that devil off the hook. But we always talk about white folks. Oh, I mean always. It's never a time not to. But I'm into you no. Know, let's put the mirror on ourselves and each other when it comes to certain things. And black women been lying. Black women 
feed off the, just like every other group, off of the, off the, the carcass of dead black boys and black men. They get to be, get to be the sympathetic, they get to be the sympathetic figure in the story. Oh my God, I lost my son. Oh, I lost my baby. Please, you, you had birth, you gave birth to him in a black ghetto. But you remember you just said you lost your two other sons to gang violence. You should have moved out to the first damn murder. <laughs> so it's... And so... You know, everybody gets to feed off of black boys. And, polit and the politicians know it. And black women have either been manipulated or they just don't give a damn. I've gone past. Well, you know, they're being used. No, they volunteer. Just like during slavery. They know they were powerless, so what they do, they gave in. They started volunteering, getting their bodies to the plantation owner. And then they volunteered to try to have the, the mixed kids because they knew, well, I ain't going to be shit, but at least my mulatto child will have a better life than I had with the plantation owner. It's still the same thinking because we haven't read Carter G. Woodson's Miseducation of the Negro. We haven't read, uh, damn, what's that damn, that, that document that people people say is not real, uh, I'll get to it in a minute. It'll come it'll come to mind. But yeah, it's the same thing. It still treats the same way. I mean, and then this liberal, the liberals out here reward black women for dogging out black men and humiliating and disrespecting black men. Time magazine put a black female on on the goddamn cover with a fist in the air with a little child there representing the black male, making him the child. Or women don't need a man. We can do it ourselves. Oh, yeah. Oh, they play a big part. These people y'all call Democrats and liberals, they purposely push black men out of the way and push black women up. All this funding that they get, all this exposure that they get for doing minimal stuff, but they give them enough cameras, makes it like they're doing a lot. Everything they do, liberal cameras on them. Yeah, making of a slave. Thank you. And, um, uh, All this stuff, the stuff we should have learned when we were when we, in our in our wonderful HBCUs, or at least in the uh, Black Student Union at your at your PWI, <laughs> could learn all that then. So, you know, we uh we seem to be we believe that we progressed so far, but we we act like we're so behind in what we think and the way we move in this country. America's not perfect; it's not all that, but it's the money to be made. I know that a lot of people are making a lot of money, and a lot of people are making money off of us, because we seem to give these people our money. And so, yeah, I, I'm way past that whole, you know, black women are powerful. No, they're not. They, 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 they're alive because black men die. That's why black women are successful, because black men die. How oh, y'all didn't know that? How you think every, everybody gets to be alive because of black boys, black men? You know, even in the school system. Uh, yeah. Hold on one second, y'all. I'll be right back. <laughs> 